right, this is unit four, which is quadratics. For 4A, we're going back to reading graphs, really looking at all the characteristics like domain range, increasing, decreasing intervals, um, real solutions. That's a new one for us. Um, Y-intercepts, axis of symmetry, maximum minimums, whether it's a max or minimum, and then end behavior. And there's going to be a little bit more to do with that, but first it's reading graphs, really. So domain, just a quick refresher on domain. Domain is all the x values in a graph. So pretty much think x values, how far left to how far right does the graph go? And is are there any kind of like breaks in between? So this graph, if I'm just going to start here at the peak, the maximum point, and I just follow how far left the that graph go, well, it'll keep going left forever. And left forever on the x-axis is going to negative infinity. So our domain is going to start at negative infinity. And then how far right will it go? Well, it'll continue to the right forever. And right forever on a graph goes to positive numbers, and it'll go to positive infinity. So domain is from negative infinity to positive infinity. Now, when it comes to the range, I always start at the bottom to the top. And the reason why we go left to right is you have negative numbers and you're going to positive numbers. And it's the same thing with the range. You're going from negative numbers up to positive numbers. So that's why we go bottom to top, left to right. So when it comes to the range, we're looking at how low will the graph go? How far down will it go? Well, both, both these ends are going down forever, and down forever is negative infinity. So that's where our range is going to start at, negative infinity. And then how high does the graph go? Well, both, you can follow either side. The highest point is here, and the y value is 2. y is going to equal 2. There's an actual closed point there, so a closed point is a bracket. And that just means it's included. So included. All right, increasing intervals. Now we need to look at increasing and decreasing intervals. So from always read these left to right. So from left to right, we're going, let me do that a little thicker. Left to right is going up, so that's increasing. And then after the peak, the maximum, it's going to be decreasing. So it's going to increase. Now we're going to look at domain of the increasing portion. So where is it increasing from? And it's the domain of the increasing portion. So it's like x, these are x values. So how far left will this, the left side go? It'll go left forever to negative infinity. And then what's the, where does it stop increasing? It stops increasing at x equals 1. You can look right here. That's 1. Two, so x value of 1. And you can put a bracket or parentheses. It does not matter to me. And where does it start decreasing? It starts decreasing also at 1. Again, it could be a bracket or parentheses. And where does it stop decreasing? It stops never. It keeps going to the right forever, and right forever is positive infinity. All right, real solutions. Let me erase what we got going on here. There's a lot of stuff. Solutions, another word for a solution, another place you can look. Real solutions is just where is it crossing the x-axis. So it's crossing the x-axis. It looks like at x equals 0 and x equals 2. So those are our solutions, x equals 0, x equals 2. Y-intercept, where is it crossing the y-axis? So y-intercept, well, it's crossing the y-axis, goes through the y-axis right here at 0. So y-intercept of 0, 0, you can have it as a point. y equals 0, it does not matter really to me. Let's just make it a point, 0, 0. Axis of symmetry, now this is something, something new. Uh, axis of symmetry is where is the graph, where can you split the graph in half that the left and right side are exactly the same? And it goes right through the vertex here. So the vertex, you can I draw I draw a vertical line. That, that's the vertex x equals one. Or that's the uh, the dashed line that I just drew there is where x equals one, x value is one. That's our axis of symmetry. It's always the x value of the vertex. So x value of vertex. And x equals 1 is a, a vertical line. Um, is it a maximum or minimum point? Is the vertex a maximum or minimum? Uh, that's a maximum point. 
at one, two. And now let's look at end behavior, the last thing we have to do. So end behavior, you have two ends of the graph. How far left does that graph go? The X value is gonna go left forever to negative infinity. And what's the Y value gonna do there? The Y value, it's going down to negative infinity. So that's one of them. So X equals to negative infinity, the Y goes to negative infinity. The right side, how far right will that go? It'll go right forever to positive infinity. And how far down will it go as it's going to the right forever? Well, it's going to go down to negative infinity. So positive infinity, negative infinity. Cool. So really you're looking at, if you're looking at uh, this here, that just means the Y values are going down. Both sides of the graph are going down forever. So that's the first thing. Example two, we have, we have to actually graph, have to graph these. So to graph them by hand, I, I really want us to do that. First, we, let's look at the vertex. So the vertex can be found by doing x equals the opposite of b over 2a. Now, I haven't even talked about a, b, or c. So there's a standard form, sorry, standard form. And this is y equals a x squared plus b x plus c. So you really got to look at your a, b, and c. And for the vertex, so our one half is your a. Your b is with the x value, so I'll always take the plus or minus with it. So it's a positive 4 for your b. And it's a positive 10 for your C. So in this case, for the vertex, for the X value, this is the X value of vertex. The vertex is a coordinate. So it's like the X value. And so we don't know the Y yet. So we have to figure it out by doing X equals the opposite of B. So I, I think of this as opposite. Or you could do negative. It doesn't matter. So our B is 4 and our a is one half. So x equals opposite of b is negative four over two times one half. You can use a calculator for these, that's fine. Negative four in the numerator, two times or a half of two is one. So our x value is negative four. So that's our x value of the vertex. Now you have to find the y value. To find the y value, you have to substitute it back in. So we're going to substitute the negative 4 into the original equation. So x squared plus 4x plus 10. Substituting negative 4 in. And again, you can do this with a calculator. You can do it with Desmos. Um, love for you to try to do it by hand. So you have to do order of operations. So negative 4 squared is positive 16. Negative 4 times negative 4 is positive 16. 4 times a negative 4 is a negative 16, so plus a negative 16 or minus 16, and then plus 10 at the end. So we start to do a half of 16 is 8, and I'll do plus a negative is just minus. So now we just have... 8 minus 16 is negative 8, plus 10 is 2. So our y value is 2. There's our vertex, negative 4, 2. Negative 4, 2. We can plot that point. That's where our vertex is going to be. Now, axis of symmetry is, well, I guess we should probably graph, but axis of symmetry, let's just do that. Um, now, we'll, we'll, let's graph it. So to graph the rest of this, we have... Use a table. Table, so our, I'm gonna the first one was the vertex, negative four, two. We want I want to have five points. Five coordinates. Let's try to have five coordinates. The easy way to do this, the easiest way to do this, if you have a fraction, like here, one half, always choose the x values, because we have to choose x values. Choose x values. Always choose x values that are 
multiples of the denominator. So two, four, six, eight. In this case, we're in the negatives already with negative four. So we're gonna go negative four. Let's choose negative two. Um, if you go two to the right of negative four, you should also go two to the left of negative four, so negative six. We could also do two to the right of negative two, that's zero. Zero is always a fun one, easy one. And two to the left of negative six is negative eight. So we're gonna substitute these numbers in. So as x equals negative two, let's put that into the equation. One half times negative two squared plus four times negative two plus 10. So we just have to do the order of operations again, just like we just did before. Negative two squared is four. Four times negative two is negative eight. Half of four is two minus eight plus 10. So two minus eight is negative six plus 10 is four. So symmetry, axis of symmetry, what that means, so negative two, four. What axis of symmetry means is from the vertex, any point that is one right will have any, any coordinate one right of the vertex will also have a coordinate of the exact same uh, y value one left. So right here we have two right of the vertex. So two left at negative six will also have a point at positive four. So negative six, if you substitute that in, it will automatic, it'll be four for the y value. If you substitute one in of the equal distance to the vertex, the other one of equal distance to the vertex will have the exact same y value. So you can substitute it if you want, or if you want to save some time, you certainly can. Uh, we don't know zero, so I'm going to substitute zero in. That's one of my favorite numbers to substitute because it's easy. Or it's one of the easiest. I wouldn't say it's easy, but it's easy, one of the easiest. So zero squared is zero times one half. We can just do that zero. Four times zero is zero plus 10. Oh, that's a nice number. Is 10. So zero, 10 is a coordinate, and that means negative eight is also, that is, that is four away from negative four, so it, that's also 10. So zero, 10, I don't have it on my graph, but I am just gonna put a point up where I believe it would be. And same thing at negative eight, 10, I'm gonna put it up on the graph. And there's our five points. So we can actually just draw a nice quadratic shaped graph. So there's your graph. It's equal to, so that's why it's a solid line. All right, now we have that. And axis of symmetry. Axis of symmetry, this is the x value of the vertex. So x equals negative four. And you see from my dashed line, to the left and to the right, is there's the mirror images of each other. You could fold the graph on x equals negative four and the left and right side would be exactly the same. Is it a max or a minimum point? Well, this is a min, the vertex is a minimum. And there you go for that. Um, next thing is the general shape of the graph. So I'm gonna ask you about the A values. Remember A is Y equals AX squared plus BX plus C. A lot can be said by looking at the A values. So you can tell if it's a, gonna be a really a wide graph, a narrow graph, upside down graph, or right side up. So if A is absolute value is equal to one, so it's, you're gonna get a general shape of like our general quadratics that you studied in unit one. So pretty basic. Uh, or it could be an upside down, but still you have your, your coordinates that are, it could be reflected, but um, there's just your general coordinates like 1, 1, negative 1, 1, 0, 0 um, are key coordinates from the beginning of the year. If the A is greater than 1, so absolute value means it's positive, is greater than 1, this is going to give you a narrow graph. So instead of 1, 1, it might be something like 1, 3. So it's going to be a really narrow graph or a narrower graph. So you're going to look at your second coordinates. So instead of Looking at 1, 1, negative 1, 1, it'd be 1, something like 3, 1, 2, 1, 4. Those coordinates are a lot higher on the graph. 
if your a is greater than one. If the a is less than one, so that means it's a fraction. So like a equals, say it's one, let's not do negatives. Let's say one third. What that's gonna end up doing is it's gonna take the graph and actually like widen it by quite a bit. So it's gonna look very, very wide. Um, it could be one half. It can be upside down. Both of these could be upside down. Um, so the top one could be look something like this, but it's still going to be narrow. Bottom one could be really upside down Y or upside down U. And then last orientation of the graph. So this is where A is positive or A is negative. If A is positive, it's going to be U-shaped. So it'll be up, it'll be right side up. So it'll always be, if A is positive, if A is negative, it will be upside down. Dilate, or it'll be a reflection. So it'll be like something like this. And it doesn't have to be orientated that way. It could be over any which way. And the top one can also be there. So there's your notes. Hopefully this helped you and come to class or yeah, let me know if you have any.